Welcome to Christ Church Fronton on this Easter Day 2020. Happy Easter. Easter to you all. Hello, everybody, and happy Easter to you all. Hello, everyone at Christ Church. Happy Easter to you all. Hi, Church. Happy Easter. Hello, Church. Happy Easter. Hello, Church. Happy Easter. Hi, Church, and hi, everyone. Hi, superheroes, if you can see us. Hi children, we're really missing you. We're, we're really missing the adults too, of course. Um, happy Easter and we're looking forward to seeing you soon. Bye. Happy Easter, bye. Happy Easter, everyone. Be, be safely. Happy Easter, church. <laughs> Hi everybody. Just want to wish you all a very happy Easter. Lots of love to all. Stay safe. Bye bye. Bye. Rejoice that Christ is risen. Happy Easter, everyone. I send best wishes and Easter wishes to those at Christ Church. Hello, Hello Church. Church. Happy, Happy Easter. Easter. Hello, Church. Happy Easter. Hello, Church. Happy and blessed Easter as we celebrate the risen Lord. Hello, Church. Hi, Church. Happy Easter. Hi, Easter. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
Christ is risen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. listening to our service still. Mums and dads, if they've disappeared, give them a shout, tell them to come back in because this is a special part just for them. Hello children, we are going to sing our favourite song at Christchurch. We sing it every day at Playhouse, every week at Treehouse. Do you know what it is? Did you say our God is a great big God? You did? Well done. We're going to sing that song because we know it tells us wonderful things about God, that he's big, that he's great, and we know he's amazing because today we're remembering that he came back to life. He defeated death. Now we need some help to sing our song, don't we? I wonder where our special helper is. Who do you think might help us sing it? Did you say Banjo Bob? You are right. He's not here with me. 
He's in his own house. So shall we give him a shout after three? And mums and dads and grown can help us too. Remember, after three. One, two, three. Banjo Bob! Oh, thanks, Damien. Hello, everybody. And I hope you're enjoying our combination of worship and celebration this Easter day. Um, I've had it. Oh, look what I've had. Oh, Kit Kat Junkie. Eh? One of my favourites. Now, um, obviously, we're in strange times still at the moment and everywhere's closed. And I don't know if you know, but that Blackpool Zoo has had to close as well. Uh, but they've actually put out a little uh, plea for people to sort of take in some of the animals for a little while. And we've stupidly agreed to do that. So we've got, uh, uh, well, a new guest to introduce you to in a few minutes time. So mm, stick around for that. Uh, now he's, uh, he's staying in our spare room, which is not a good idea, but he's a bit of a scallywag. He's just having a shower at the moment. He'll be down in a minute, but he tends to eat everything in sight. So I'm just going to hide my egg for a moment and I'll be back. Ta-da, I'm back. <laughs> All right, so let's sing our favourite song, Great Big God. There's some actions to it. Our God is a great big God, and he holds us in his hands. And he's higher than a skyscraper, and deeper than a submarine. All right, you'll get the hang of it. I'm sure you all know it anyway. Here we go then, joining the actions, everybody. It's uh, Great Big God. Here we go. song and thank you for all that you do throughout the year and you and Leslie in serving us and leading us in worship and helping us at church and happy Easter to you both. Now on Friday, Good Friday at our messy church we learnt a new version of an old song. One, two, three, four, five, once I call to fish alive, we learned some new words about Jesus being alive. So we're going to sing that now, and Alana from Emu Music is going to sing it to us. Let's go over there now. Thanks, Alana. Hello, my name is Alana, and welcome to my living room. We're going to sing a song together, and it's called One, Two, Three, Four, Five, Jesus Christ is Now Alive. I think that you'll know the tune, so you should be able to sing along, but it would be good if you could do some actions as well. Now, I can't really do actions and play guitar at the same time. Hmm, what can we do about this? That's better. So, follow me for the singing and follow me for the actions. Great, let's go. Thank you. 
that a wonderful song? Now, we're going to go back to Banjo Bob. Now, I've got a feeling that Banjo Bob is going to introduce somebody new to us. Remember before he said that the zoo is closed and I want people to take in animals. Now, mums and dads, sorry if your children get any ideas. And it means that Bob has a special guest. Let's go over now to Banjo Bob and Gary the Gorilla. Oh, hello everybody. We're just, um, I'm just finishing Gary's hair. We've got a new guest for you today. This is Gary the Gorilla, everybody. Say hello to everybody. Say hello, Gary. Hello, Gary. No, I mean, I mean, say hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. How are you? I'm okay. I've not slept for three days. You've not slept for three days. Why is that? I sleep at night. <laughs> that was very good. Um, well, oh, hang on a minute. Boys and girls, he's forgotten something. You've forgotten something, have I? What have I forgotten? The mask. Oh, yeah, what, because of the virus? No, because you're ugly. <laughs> oh, that's nice, isn't it? But anyway, listen, you don't need the mask on, do you? Because it's um, we live in the same household. You haven't got to self-isolate, have you? Right. <clears throat> oh, hang on a minute. What's the matter? Which one's the gorilla? <laughs> oh, yeah, very funny. Right, now listen, say... Uh, oh, say hello to the mums and dads as well. Hello, mums and dads. <clears throat> now, Gary, yeah, we've learnt a song, haven't we? So we try the song. Yeah, go on then. It's called uh, King of the Jungle, isn't it? Now, I found it a bit hard to play the ukulele with uh, Gary here. Well, oh, he's got his name tag, by the way. I don't know if you can read that. Is it the right way around? Or are we in mirror image? I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, uh, so we're going to... I found it a bit hard to play the ukulele with him hanging around my neck. So I've recorded the ukulele and we're going to sing it. If I press the right button, Gary, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's press the button then. Oh, I think I've got one of your hairs in my mouth. Okay, are you ready then? It's King of the Jungle. Here we go. <clears throat> if it works. Oh, here we go, everybody. You can join in the actions. Ah, here we go. There's a bit where the boys and girls can do your monkey impressions. Here we go. Gary will show you. Who's the king of the jungle? Woo, woo. Who's the king of the sea? Bubble, bubble, bubble. Who's the king of the universe? And who's the king of me? I'll tell you. J-E-S-U-S. -E He's the king of me. He's the king of the universe. The jungle and the sea. Bubble, bubble, bubble. Woo, woo, woo. Who's the king of the jungle? Woo, woo. Who's the king of the sea? Bubble, bubble, bubble. Who's the king of the universe? Who's the king of me? I'll tell you. J-E-S-U-S. -E yes! He is the king of me. He's the king of the universe. The jungle and the... Repeat the last line. He's the king of the universe. The jungle and the sea. Bubble, bubble, bubble. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Hey. Hey, it's not bad, Gary. You did well. And yourself. Oh, <laughs> we'll say bye for now. We'll see you again. Say bye, bye. Wave your foot. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye, bye. Well, thank you, Banjo Bob and Gary the Gorilla. And Gary, it's great to meet you. And we hope we'll see you again in the weeks to come. Now, children, if you're not sat down, just sit down where you are, because we're going to listen now to a brilliant story the story, the true story, about the life of Jesus, about his death, and about his coming back to life, which we call the resurrection. It's called a seriously surprising story. Two people moving and marching, thinking, head scratching about something big that's just been happening. But on the road to Emmaus from Jerusalem Way, two became three as another says, Hey, hey, says he, you've been thinking and head scratching. Has something big just been happening? <gasps> you've not heard about what's been happening? All of Jerusalem have been head scratching. What have I missed? Asks the man. I'd love to know. Please tell if you can. It's about a man called Jesus and we thought he was coming to rescue God's people and send the Romans off running. He did and he said loads of cool stuff from a place up north called Nazareth. He told great stories and healed the sick. He knew people by name and what made them tick. 
Oh, remember that wedding? He turned water to wine, brought his friend back to life and his friend felt just fine. He was sharing and caring, just ask his friend Pete. He walked on the water with only his feet. He said shush to the storm and the storm was hushed. He did a miracle with bread and thousands were stuffed. Besides all this, his sermon up a hill had so many stories, super cool and brill. I can't believe it. What a big loss. A man so great who hung on a cross and on that cross, that's where he died. I feel so tied up in knots inside. And three days have passed, though it feels more like 70, because now we've heard that his tomb is empty. <laughs> That's right, you heard me. His body is gone. But who'd take his body? He never did wrong. You seem confused and out of the picture. So let me show you what it says in the scripture. It was always the plan, right from the start, because Jesus loved you with all of his heart. He died on the cross, but rose from the tomb. He came back to life so you can live too. And as they were moving, and still head scratching, two of them stopped, but the third kept on marching. Uh, hey, uh, don't go, please, the two say. The sun's gone to bed, so why don't you stay? Good point, says the third. Day has turned to night. I'll stop over with you two and then grab a bite. And as they sit down to eat, they close their eyes. He thanks God for the grub, then what a surprise! The two people stare and then rub their eyes. It's Jesus, not gone, but fully alive! And before they say seconds, there's more bread going round. Jesus just vanishes. He cannot be found. The two are left thinking and really head scratching. They'd just been with Jesus. Something big was happening. We must say we've seen Jesus, so tie up your shoes. Quick to Jerusalem, there's no time to lose. All along it was Jesus, the very same one. They were searching the scriptures with God's precious son. It's the biggest story that's ever been told about Jesus who's risen and never gets old. The two met with Jesus in the most surprising way. They shared the story and we still share it today. That seriously surprising story we know to be a true story because the Bible gives it to us. In a moment, we're going to head to Roger's house where Roger will read to us from John's Gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Alleluia. The Gospel reading can be found on page 906 of the Black ESV Bibles, John chapter 20, verses 1 to 18. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one who Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple, and they were going towards the tomb. Both of them were running together. But the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stopping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there, and the face cloth which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb, 
and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have lain him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father, and your Father, to my God, and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, that he had said these things to her. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I'm full because it was empty. Wind back the clock by a century and then times up by 20, you find yourself smack bang in the middle of a story filled with plenty. Plenty of drama, good v evil, social upheaval and Pilate's Paul for the people. One word, popularity. And for clarity, treason sealed with a kiss gives reason to believe that this story seeps more plot twists than that Sixth Sense film with Bruce Willis. Now, main character, this guy, who weren't just guy, this guy was God, God's son. Flesh and bones breed breath, then were a crown of thorns, but we'll get to that later. Let's address the fact there's this crater within us that needs a fill, and the climax happened up Golgotha Hill. Still, we'll get to that in just a minute. First, this guy. This guy was God, fully perfect fully God. Protagonist of the greatest story ever told, see this guy came to fulfil the promises of old, to fix up a relationship once broken, to be the fall guy, to become our sin payment talker. See, I'm full. I'm full because it was empty. I'm filled with life, life with plenty, I'm penalty paid, I'm free. But not just free, I'm full. I'm freely full and fully free, all cause it was empty. Adam and Eve didn't believe and obey. They went their own way, disobeyed. A perfect relationship with Maker freed. Because it was empty, it's all changed. My path has been rerouted, remade, rearranged. See this guy, this guy was God. Bore mankind's weight of sin upon a tree, all to pay the penalty. Lived, then died on a cross, all to pay the total cost. All to pay for my mistakes, but I get life. Guess that's called grace. And because he was afflicted, my burden of sin has been lifted. Because he said, it is finished. Then, he took his last breath. And taken by death, he had died. And just in case, a spear rammed through his side. But a side not for you, for you are not going to believe what happens next. Laid in a tomb, his body so scarred, a boulder blocks the entrance and centurions on guard. But then three days later, death lost his hold. And this bit, this bit is cool. The grip of sin was over because the boulder had been bowled over. So now, forgiven and freely full and fully free, all cause it was empty. This is the day when our Lord Jesus Christ was raised gloriously from the dead crushing the power of sin and destroying the sting of death. Throughout the world, Christians celebrate the mighty power of God as Christ calls us out of darkness 
to share in his marvellous light. May we and all Christ's people shine as lights in the world to the glory of God the Father. Let us now come before him to say sorry for the times when we have lived our lives in darkness rather than his marvellous light. Let's be quiet for a few moments as we come before the Lord to bring before him our sins. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with the living bread. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. There's only one way to respond to the proclamation of God's forgiveness, and that's to sing in worship to him.
time has come Still my soul will sing your praise unending Ten thousand years to live These last three Sundays, we haven't had the opportunity to gather together in church and give financially as part of our worship. However, I have been astounded, but not surprised, by the generosity of church members during the week. We have been continuing to operate our food pantry from the front of the hall, using all the safe distancing measures that we've been asked to use. Every day, people have phoned and requested a food parcel and church members have volunteered to take those food parcels out to the doorsteps of those in need. Every day, the food has started to look like it's running low, but every day, God has provided, with a church member or two phoning up to say, I'm bringing some food, can you accept it today? Every day, God has provided. So thank you to all those who have contributed in that way. We have been looking after the welfare of others in our church community and our wider community of Thornton. During this month and last month, we have been £1,400 short in our cash collections because we haven't had public worship in church. Many of our congregation give through standing order, bank transfer or through online, online giving through the website. Thank you to all those who do. Many of you still give by traditional means through the brown envelopes or directly through cash. And for you, it's been harder to give by being absent from the church building. Please may I take the opportunity to direct you towards ways that you can give if you are able through digital means. If you go to our church website, www.christchurchfaunton.uk, you will find at the top a menu. If you go across to the right where it says how and click on there, you'll see it says how to give. If you click on that page, it then talks you through different options. For example, the details for setting up a standing order or for making a bank transfer or for using an app called Lepton, which is a way to give very easily directly through the website or through your tablet or phone. It also enables you to gift aid and to give regularly. Please do not feel under any obligation or pressure to give financially if during the coronavirus crisis you are struggling. Perhaps your job is at threat or perhaps your income has reduced. This message is for all those who feel they can give. Please do honour the Lord in your giving. Our worship is not just sung. Our worship is from the heart and our worship involves every part of our life. We're called to love God with all our heart, soul, mind and strength and to love our neighbour as ourself. I know many people have been loving your neighbour. Thank you. You have been showing Christian hospitality and love to those in your community. But if you are able, please do give through the digital means that are provided. It will help us to continue running all of our regular activities when we restart our public worship. 
It will help us to have the confidence to know that we can pay all our bills and support our staff team. It will help us to know that we can flourish as Christ's presence here in Thornton. Let us pray. God of all good things, open our hearts to fresh ways of serving you and your world. Open our minds to new ways of sharing all that you have given to us. Open our soul so that we may be filled with your overflowing love. Amen. Well, as we think about our Christian giving, I have the brilliant privilege of showing you what many people have contributed towards. Let's have a look. These are our brand new chairs. They look brilliant. We have bought 200 chairs, 50 have arms. They are comfortable, they are light, they're hard wearing, they're colour fast, they are a brilliant material that does not pill, and they are a tremendous blessing. We started this project on Monday the 2nd of March, and two and a half weeks later, the floor was fully restored. We had 14 men on that first Monday the 2nd of March, plus some ladies helping restore this floor. It now looks beautiful. In the morning, the windows dazzle off the floor as the sun moves around the church. We have restored the floor. We have um, new brass plates around the edge of the carpet. The floor has been sanded and varnished and the pews have been taken away. We now have a worship space which can be moved for any particular service. If we needed to move these chairs now, we could do it within half an hour. We could stack them all up and move them. It won't always look like this for every service. Some services might need less chairs, and so we can make the space relevant for that particular church service. Let me show you a closer look at the chairs. The Bibles are currently on the chairs. It looks nice, and it shows you what we can do with them. But on the back, there's a pocket, and in that pocket, we can stick the Bibles in there. The chairs unclip really easily. There's a little thing there, you just come off. They are really light to pick up. Really light. One finger. Not because I'm strong, but because the chairs are light. They're a really nice fabric. They're modern in design, which matches the church. We have a modern church building. In the side aisles, we have created some spaces, what you might call breakout spaces, for tea and coffee, perhaps during the daytime, or for after Sunday services, for meeting spaces during the week, for small groups to get together, to have conversation, to have Bible study, to plan things during the week. So thank you to all those who contributed financially to this very big project, to all those who gave of their time and their energy and their skills. We honour you, we thank you, we praise God for you. The only thing left now is for us to get back into church and to sit down on these lovely chairs and to thank God for this amazing place that we have to worship him.
During this Holy Week, we have remembered the act of Jesus' love washing his disciples' feet. The institution of the Lord's Supper, so that we will always remember his death on our behalf. And on that Good Friday, he was led like a lamb to the slaughter. The Lamb of God was sacrificed once for all our sin. But today we celebrate that Jesus is alive. And so now we worship with our next song of worship. You're alive, led like a lamb to the slaughter. If you can, wherever you are, why don't you stand as we worship God?
We now proclaim together our common faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please join with me in saying, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. And now Sally, Bob, Leslie, Peter, Mags and Gwen will lead us in prayer. Lord, like a watchful shepherd you care for us and provide us with all that we need. You shower us with your love and send people into our lives to look after us especially in times of sickness and pain. We pray for healing for all who suffer. In the midst of our pain and weakness, strengthen our faith that we may be filled with hope in you. In the midst of our frustrations and discouragement, give us patience that we may accept our limitations. In the midst of our loneliness and fears, help us to know we are not alone and that you walk with us each moment of our lives. Be with us, Lord, in our time of need. Heal us in body, soul and spirit, that we may rejoice in your grace and blessings in this world. We make this prayer in your name, our risen Lord. Amen. Loving Father, we pray for our local community and neighbours that we may be led by your spirit to those who need our help at this time. We thank you, Lord, for showing us this new emerging community spirit of love and compassion for others. And we pray that this may continue throughout and beyond these current difficult times. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for the church family here in this parish and that your spirit will guide us to make and maintain contact with each other with offers of assistance where required and also with words of encouragement and support to those who are particularly struggling with the difficulties of self-isolation. May we reflect your love in all our words and deeds. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, we thank you for our food pantry here at Christchurch. We pray for all who are in need of it and for all who give generously to it. And for Damien, to whom you've shown innovative new ways to operate it single-handedly. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we pray for all those who are in positions of responsibility and power in our land. We pray, Lord, that you will guide them and direct them in all the policies that they make for our country. As they listen to advice that is given to them from various sources, we pray that you will help them to work out what is for the best for all the people of our country. As they seek to help those who are suffering financially, with jobs, with their health, and so many other matters. We pray, Lord, for your blessing upon them. We pray, Lord Father, for our health service, for the those on the front line. We pray for the nurses and the doctors who are working so hard, and we give thanks for all that they do. And we pray for those who are working to supply all the medical needs. We pray that you will bless all that work that goes on, that we'll, may, we may 
very soon be able to stop this virus from spreading further. We pray, Lord, for the scientists who are seeking to find a, a vaccine that will be able to put out and to stop this virus. We pray, Lord, that you will guide them in all the work that they do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, thank you that we can still praise and glorify your name. Though we're not able to meet together physically, we still can be unified in praising your name, in glorifying you, in proclaiming that you are risen from the dead. And Lord, I pray that that wouldn't just be for this morning, but Lord, our lives would proclaim that you are risen, that you have a hope and a purpose for people's lives. Father, I pray that we will boldly proclaim your gospel in every area of our life. Pray that our actions and our words would glorify you, that, Lord, we would honour you in the things we say and do, that we may be able to share the good news of our salvation, that, Lord, you sent your Son to die, but to rise again, to forgive us from our sins, so that we could be friends with you. Help us to be bold, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you for this special day where we celebrate your rising from death. Thank you for all you did for us on the cross and for rising from the dead. And by this, you claim your victory over sin and death. You open the way for us to go to heaven and to be with you. And so we have that sure and certain hope of eternal life when we put our trust in you. So today, we give you all the glory, thanks and praise. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for your amazing world. We see the trees coming back to life after winter, the blossom coming out. And we think about our hope of a new life through your resurrection. But we also see a world that's full of fear because of this virus. Fear of the unseen. Something so small, yet it's already touched millions of lives. We pray for each and every country and ask for your wisdom and blessing upon its leaders. May they seek your face, humble themselves before you and pray that you will heal their land. Father, we pray for our leader, for Boris Johnson, and pray that you'll touch him and pray that he might seek you for the good of this country. But we pray that all the leaders might work together, that there might be a unity and that people might be seeking to help one another. We just ask you, Lord, to touch your world that you made and heal it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We gather all our prayers and praises into one as we say together that precious prayer which our Lord Jesus taught us to pray. In traditional form, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever amen we sing in christ alone
Well, today is a majestic day. It's a day of joy, a day of wonder, a day of awe, where we try and imagine the sight 2,000 years ago of Mary Magdalene looking into the tomb, seeing the stone rolled away, of Peter and John coming up behind her to, to look inside and discovering an empty tomb. Jesus in the tomb was very much isolated. You could call it self-isolation, although others put him to death, others put him in his tomb. But of course, Jesus chose to die. Jesus came to earth for that very purpose. He didn't come to live a long life. He didn't come to live a life as a royal king with palaces and riches. He came to suffer. He came to give himself. And so Jesus, in that sense, he did self-isolate. He put himself in that position of death and burial. But Jesus was in charge the whole time. He did it on his terms. And when the moment was right, he came out of his self-isolation and back into the community. He appeared to his disciples. He appeared to those who were close to him. And it was a majestic sight. Imagine approaching the tomb and seeing that stone rolled away. Perhaps you might think, well, the stone had to be rolled away for Jesus to get out. But I want to give you a different way of thinking about that today. The stone wasn't rolled away to let Jesus out. He didn't need that. He could walk through walls if he wanted to, his new spiritual resurrected body. Remember later on, he appeared to the disciples in a locked room. He was not uh, restricted by boundaries or things such as walls. No, the stone wasn't rolled away to let Jesus out. It was rolled away to let the disciples in, to see that the tomb was empty, that his isolation had ended. And so in these difficult times for us, as a community in Thornton, as a nation, as a world, when we are being asked to self-isolate, when we are being asked to take ourselves away from community, from face-to-face -face contact with people, from social interaction, we know something of what it's like to be on our own, to be in darkness, to be confined and to be isolated. But Jesus came out of his isolation, his very bad isolation, death. He came out of that to give you life. So that you will never truly know the isolation of death or what we might call the isolation of separation from God the Father. Jesus cried out on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? At that moment, we have the evidence that Jesus was separated from his Father. He was taking upon himself the separation that we deserve because of what we do wrong in our lives. And so Jesus was separated. Jesus endured the hell of being separated from his loving Heavenly Father. Now that is proper isolation. Being separated from God for an eternity, that is an isolation to be dreaded. But Jesus came out of his isolation into resurrection so that we might never be isolated from God, but always in community with him. So I commend to you today to put your faith afresh in the resurrection, to believe in Jesus, to call upon him to forgive you of all the things in your life that you're not proud of. Jesus is ready and waiting to forgive you so that you can have that personal relationship with him and his father and his spirit living in you. Don't hesitate. Let this day be your resurrection day because we're promised that the same power that brought Jesus back to life, the Holy Spirit, is the same power that will bring us back to life on that day in the future when our earthly lives come to an end. You can look forward to, long for, hope for, the wonderful joy of eternal life, no longer in isolation, but in community with the Godhead 
with the Father, the Son and the Spirit. Believe in Jesus, call upon his name, come to him, put your trust in him and know him now and always. Amen. Well, let us pray. Lord Jesus, the evidence of your resurrection was not in the empty tomb necessarily, but in your appearance to those that knew you. The stone wasn't rolled away for us to see the tomb being empty, but to allow the disciples to go in and discover themselves that you, Jesus, had come back to life. Lord Jesus, may we be like those disciples, peering into the empty tomb, looking for you, looking to find you and more of you and a depth of relationship with you in our lives. And may we be those who discover that you are alive, that you are in us and with us and for us and behind us and above us and in front of us and preparing a heavenly place for us. Lord Jesus, you came out of isolation from the room to the tomb, away from gloom, away from doom, to give us a room in your Father's paradise. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your resurrection. Amen. Let's praise. Let's sing, crown him with many crowns.
praise Jesus. Praise the one who went from isolation in the tomb to resurrection. And may you this Easter know the resurrection power of Jesus in you. And now as we come to the end of our worship online, we invite God to bless us. Let's bow our heads in prayer. May Christ, who out of defeat brings new hope and a new future, fill you with his new life and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. With the power that raised Jesus from the dead at work within you, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. In the name of Christ, amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Yeah.